This is a Sony TCK561S studio cassette deck. It got quite beaten up judging by how the case was dented. On the front panel we can see a VU meter which is uh, switchable uh, between showing the tape level and the monitor level by the monitor button on the front. Uh, it also shows the currently selected Dolby type and if we insert the tape it also detects its type and changes this red indicator basing on what it has detected. Contrary to some cassette decks I've seen the mm, tape control buttons are actually not mechanical. Those are like electronic push buttons that control the internal central processing unit which in turn controls the tape deck. On the other side We've got the recording uh, adjustments, such as the recording level, uh, balance, option to put the monitor on the display either into monitoring the tape level or the input level, some adjustments of biasing and recording level, a selector for the Dolby system we want to use, and a filter. Now if we power this unit up, You can hear the terrible rattling noises the cassette deck makes. Alright, let's go ahead and lift the chassis up to see what's inside. Starting from the power supply we've got a transformer board. Out of the transformer there are a couple of taps going out into the main board. We've got two fuses on here and the power supply stage and the rest of the main board is uh, mostly control and analog stuff. The front panel is divided into two PCBs. This is the display side and this is the recording adjustment side. One interesting thing is that the power button is not a hard power button like in the Onyo gear but uh, uh, it's just a soft button. Power is controlled by the CPU, so that means that ultimately when this thing is powered off, or it looks to be powered off, in actu it's actually in standby mode. So everything is controlled by a microprocessor. And this is the problematic part, that is the mechanical assembly that moves the tape and does all the magic. That's where the magnetic head is located. So let's remove this uh, magnetic head assembly. But first I'm gonna label those Flatflex cables so I know where they go. So this one's gonna be one, it's gonna have one dot and there's gonna be one dot here. And this board's gonna be number two, so two dots and two dots here. Something seems to be still holding this in place. I think I found the culprit. That one screw that holds this whole assembly in place. The bottom of the tape deck, uh, this is the screw we are interested in. You've got to be kidding me, the tape head assembly is actually obstructed by the main boards. Okay, so there are a couple of grey wires that go to the, the head assembly. You can put this thing back in its place. Okay, I'd rather move this whole thing here. Okay, at this point I think I'm just gonna disconnect the whole front. So this is the extra tape reading assembly. We've got two heads in this one. Recently it didn't want to open the, the drawer. Uh, so this is the uh, place where the physical uh, eject button uh, pushes the small lever. And as you can see, if you push it, uh, then just freeze the drawer like this. But there's also this small piece of plastic that can go up and down and you can see this small piece here. It goes up and blocks the eject button when the uh, those two heads are actually raised uh, towards the tape so that you cannot eject the tape while uh, it's running. So if you take a look, I can freely open the drawer now, but if I push this small head assembly up, it's, it's blocked. So this in itself is a very interesting little mechanism, because 
all the operation of this thing is controlled by this uh, big cogwheel here. But uh, if you haven't already noticed it, the cogs, uh, the teeth on this, are not continuous. So, for example, here there is an empty space in the teeth. So this is the big metal wheel which is moved by one of the motors. If I move this uh, um, metal wheel, right now nothing happens, but if I push this, suddenly it ticks and I can use this wheel to propagate this big wheel into another position. Then again I push this and it clicks back. I can continue propagating it and it stops as soon as the dent uh, in the cogs, uh, it's the, the place where there aren't any cogs, uh, hits uh, this wheel again because this wheel has a very tiny cog wheel right here underneath. So by pushing this part, this spring uh, gives it enough force to move forward and then this wheel takes uh, over moving of it. And as you can see as I propagate this, uh, some parts of this are moving. So for example, uh, the head assembly has just moved here and if I uh, move it a couple of times more, you can see that it's uh, gonna move, oh it's moving up right now, so this is I suppose the play position. Alright, so with the mechanism perfectly assembled and the front panel installed, let's see if we can narrow down the source of noise. This is a belt problem. So this big belt, which drives this big uh, metal wheel, which in turn drives the cogwheel that controls the whole mechanism, is just worn out because when I turn it on, there's a very faint noise and it's produced by this motor, which controls the tape. So if you take a look at this. I'm turning this on now. You can see that it spins but the belt barely moves so I will have to either order a new belt or try to improvise something for now. So uh, I was looking for the uh, a spare or a fitting rubber belt I decided to glue one of the broken posts that holds this white motor assembly to this, so on this side you can see that this post is basically uh, connected together with some molten plastic and in this case that plastic has broken off, so a little bit of 10 minute epoxy glue and I think we should be good to go. Alright, so I've put the replacement belt onto this uh, motor mm, and now I just need to screw this thing back together uh, well, for now with this one single screw temporarily and see if it works and I've already just a couple seconds ago ordered the replacement belts for those that's it's not uh, very expensive so if this doesn't work then it's nothing to worry about because in a couple of days I might have I'll just have the new compatible belt in my hands okay so the arrangement is as previously Mm. Being frightened by the sound that was uh, this thing has made just a moment ago, I have moved the cogwheel mechanism into its into the right place. And right now, if I am correct about this, it should not make any crunching or otherwise atrocious noises. So. It stopped making noise, so let's put our sacrificial tape in. Where is that tape? Press play. No. Still not good. <laughs> 